We are extremely lucky that we have got uh, uh, Professor Balram Bhargav uh, today to talk to us on issues. And, and the primary objective of this lecture series, uh, as uh, Professor Mukesh Kumar mentioned, is in terms of focusing on uh, science, technology, and its society connect. And that, I think, is absolutely important for us to realize. And there could not have been a better person than uh, uh, Professor Balram Bhargav to, to bring that dimension. As government is trying, prime minister is trying through Ayushman Bharat, we are trying to see uh, access uh, uh, to medicine for everyone. But how can we really reduce the cost? And, and that, I think, is absolutely important. So the reference that uh, Professor uh, Mukesh Kumar made in terms of he being an innovator, I think, gives us that sense of uh, urgency in terms of India not only uh, innovating but also making it affordable, accessible and inclusive in its uh, approach. So that I think is absolutely important. Professor Balram Bhargav is Secretary, Department of Health Research uh, uh, and, and DG ICMR. Uh, he's also a Professor of Cardiology at All India Institute of uh, Medical Sciences, uh, uh, and, and he has also served as executive director for Stanford India Biodesign Center, a school of uh, international biodesigns. Uh, one very striking thing that I found in his CV was in terms of uh, uh, his uh, idea of uh, more for less and for more, uh, which, which is uh, with the mandate to promote global, affordable, need-driven healthcare innovation Gandhi, and that I think is absolutely important and, and uh, extremely timely for us to uh, move forward with. Uh, on his uh, 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 educational background, which is also given here, I'm not getting into details, but I would definitely like to mention here that he has been awarded uh, a Padma Shri and, uh, and the UNESCO Equatorial uh, uh, um, International Prize for Research in Life Sciences, uh, and has also served uh, uh, in several different capacities on different committees. Uh, he has also published uh, extensively. And I'm remembered, I remember suddenly the PL 480 and the Colombo plan and, uh, and Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan when we have to miss a meal and, and uh, 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 Lal Bahadur Shastri talking about and then I remember the, the Green Revolution. There were days when grains were being imported in India from Australia, from America and in these 70 years of independence we are exporting grains. We have done phenomenally well in, in the Green Revolution and the White Revolution. We just celebrated uh, the birthday of the father of Amul um, a, a few days back. And, and uh, uh, so, so the, the White Revolution. What we don't talk about is the pharma industry. We have done phenomenally well in the generics in this country. Uh, although new drug discovery still remains a problem, but generics we've done phenomenally well. 50 to 60% of the medications in the United States of America are of Indian origin. That is a huge, huge contribution. We don't talk about health care. We have done so well, at least I am happy to say that what our generation has done is that no one has to go out of this country for any treatment. Yet, there remain problems and uh, Professor Chaturvedi uh, talked about it, universal health coverage. That is a problem. We need to deliver that. We need to deliver this healthcare that our generation has contributed to this country to everyone. That is one point. The second important point in healthcare that we need to address uh, majorly is emergency care and having systems in place for emergency care. These are the kind of hospitals that we have established. We have the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, which featured as the, uh, on the cover story of, uh, of Newsweek in 2006 when we completed 50 years at All India Institute. We treat 3.5 million patients every year at All India Institute at the cost of $1 per day with the same infection rates as anywhere else in the Western world. That is highly commendable. We should not lose it. Now, the yin and yang of healthcare. We've contributed, but 40 million people fall below the poverty line because of health-related expenditure. That is the dark side. Brighter side is 4 million tourists, medical tourists, visit India for treatment. And India ranks number two in the world in medical tourism because of the inexpensive medical treatment compared to the Western medical treatments. Now, this is a slightly complicated slide, but I just wanted to show that if you look at 
the healthcare expenditure and the healthcare figures, and this was a series published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2015, 2016. And if you look at from the West to the East, the percentage out-of-pocket expenditure in India is 86%. The GDP spent on healthcare is hovering around 11, and, and I shouldn't be talking this in front of an economist, but uh, let me indulge. Uh, uh, so the GDP spent on healthcare is about 11 or 7 or 9 or 10 percent in the countries which have the best healthcare or the social health system in Scandinavia, in Europe, and in the United Kingdom. It is, I haven't showed the figure for the United States, but it is. 18% on healthcare of an $18 trillion economy and still not the best healthcare in the world. We should not copy that model. We have to copy the socialist model where the GDP spent on healthcare is hovering around 8 to 9%. At the current moment, the healthcare expand of India is 4%, but it has to increase. And with this Ayushman Bharat is a mechanism that it is a uh, uh, universal health coverage quoted in a special pill, probably. That is how I perceive it as that uh, the, the government health care spending is going, to, uh, is going up in a big way and the, uh, the private health care has to become less uh, expensive and they have to converge at a point where we are able to provide it to larger populations at large and that is uh, the biggest challenge that we will see in the next uh, five to ten years.